process of 2D to 3D install work starts by opening a DWG file. We use the DWG file as initial sketches in our 3D part environment. Since we support opening of DWG files with all the layers, blocks, fonts, line types, colors, and attributes, we have the ability to preview the information as well as filter out things that aren't necessary like the dimensions or title block information or whatever else. We also have the ability to go ahead and make constraints or make points that don't touch each other actually merge together. And what happens is the 2D file opens up as a sketch in our 3D part environment. With our 2D to 3D toolbar, we basically take portions of the sketch and we turn them into 3D by windowing around select areas, saying this is going to be our front view. Do the same with the top view. The difference is, is that when we take this view and roll it to the top, it actually throws it into 3D orientation for that top view. Right side view is very similar. We'll go ahead and select that. Simply window around what we want. Choose the type of view that we'd like that to be. Slightly different with the auxiliary view. We select an additional edge in one of the views that's already been selected. And when we choose the auxiliary view tool, it actually rolls that off parallel to the view that we've selected. Now the next thing that needs to be done is we need to actually go ahead and align these views. And just by picking points in two views, it will move the first selected view over in alignment with the second view. Hit alignment, they simply slide into position. Now once these are in position, we simply use the portions of the sketches that we need to create a solid. Using things like our chain select tool, I can select portions of this sketch indicate a point in space to begin the extrusion, and by hitting the extrude tool it will actually project that profile down and allow me to change the end conditions, distances, and direction. Now instead of actually having to have dimensions available to me, I can actually steal depth by using our depth tool and selecting geometry that's on screen which will actually take the distance from whatever's selected. So I basically use what I have in front of me to go ahead and give me the information that I need. Continuing on, I'm going to go ahead and select similar type of features. We'll grab the holes in the top view. This time when I hit cut, I'm not really concerned with where they start or where they end, so we'll just simply create the cut and do a through all. It goes through everything, regardless of the uh, distance or, or depth necessary. And then we'll also go ahead and use the two circles for our auxiliary view, again indicating a point in space for this auxiliary extrusion to begin, and it'll project to that point and simply allow us to go ahead and give it an appropriate end condition. Now instead of it just passing through the part or going to a regular blind end condition, we have a variety of end conditions for design intent that are more appropriate, like an up to next or up to surface or up to body. By choosing up to surface, I can indicate the face or faces that I'd like it to terminate at, and when it hits that face, it will simply end the extrusion. The last set's going to be down here at the bottom where we choose just the portions that are necessary of the side view. We're going to go ahead and cut out a slot. And when you use open sketches for a cut, what it will allow us to do is cut one side or the other of that sketch, and it grabs everything infinitely on one side or the other. So by indicating to the inside, it's going to simply cut away everything that's on that side of our sketch. Basically, that's all it takes to go ahead and import 2D AutoCAD files, turn them into 3D, and make solids from them.